to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And joining us live from Toronto, Canada is Frederick Jinbart. He is an affiliate marketing expert and consultant. He's also the CEO of Performance Partners. Welcome to the show, Frederick. Thank you for having me, Ajay. Appreciate it. Excited to be here. Welcome, welcome. You are welcome to the show. You are welcome to India in this online form. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and, uh, right. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people across the globe will benefit from what we are going to talk about. We'll be talking about the future of affiliate marketing. So uh, to understand from you, uh, Frederick, hundreds and millions of people are into this affiliate marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. So to understand from you, uh, how should we look at affiliate marketing today? Because everyone is promoting some links or the other. Even mm -hmm. I'm doing a couple of links uh, in my own manner. But mine is a very limited sort of a thing. Few people I know. But so many people are into this. And someone or the other, so many creators are doing this affiliate marketing. In your sense, how would you like to tell people, you know, what exactly affiliate marketing it? Is it is it gone beyond the original uh, original de definition? How does the future look like? That's what we will try and discover in this the, in this discussion with you today. Amazing, sounds good. Um, so to touch about how affiliate marketing has changed, affiliate marketing has changed and, and it's evolved. But I would say at its core, it's still the same that it was over decades ago. And, and that's basically um, a brand or a company, you know, will pay you to promote their products and they'll, and you will promote their products as an affiliate through their affiliate link. And every time you generate a customer or a lead, that brand will pay you a percentage of that sale. And that's, that has not changed. That is at the core of affiliate marketing. Um, and in terms of your, the, the second question that you asked in terms of the, the future of affiliate marketing, I think the future of affiliate marketing, so A, affiliate marketing is actually a very wide industry. I think a lot of people, when they think of affiliate marketing, they think of um, people promoting e-commerce products. But affiliate marketing could also be um, where you promote different lead generation companies. So generating leads for companies. Affiliate marketing can be where you uh, generate app installs. So there are a lot of different forms of affiliate marketing. But I, I believe the one that most people know about it really in the biggest like vertical or niche is, is related to e-commerce. Um, and I think that the future for that is E-commerce is, is growing every single year at exponential rates and customers are getting savvier. I think customers are, are, are getting better at being able to tell when, let's say, a, a blog or a review site is just promoting an offer just to promote it for the affiliate links versus someone who's giving an actual genuine review. And I think that's where the the industry is going towards it's the people that have a an audience right um will succeed the people who develop and work within a certain niche right so if you can be an expert in a certain product a certain niche a certain topic and you're able to grow a following around that and when you go to give a review or you go to recommend a product your following knows like hey this guy's an expert and I've, I, I know him, I like him, I trust him. That's how you can really build a successful affiliate marketing. And I think that's where it's going towards. Absolutely, absolutely. You brought in a very nice point. You talked about the customer, that customers can, you know, make out whether this is, this is a genuine product and genuine person who is talking about something genuine that they have experienced. And this is where the future is moving towards. Nowadays, if you ask me, it is almost looking like, you know, uh, that the brands do not have to come to you. You go to almost every site, so many sites, and you will find 
that you can become an affiliate uh, marketer for them. Mm -hmm. You just, they don't know you, you mm -hmm. don't know them. Mm -hmm. you, have, you may never try their products, they don't know about you. Mm -hmm. You just can create one link, put it on wherever you want to, wherever you are, your audience is, and this. How do you look at it? It is almost like, you know, that those early days you used to be a multi-level marketing schemes and all. Yeah. That it is just that you are not sharing the same uh, amount of money that you have to generate five people, then those five people will generate five more members and so on. But here it is almost like uh, one may call it, it is democratization of affiliate marketing. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, who are they catering to? It's almost like uh, you are putting all those products or services or whatever influence you have in whatever creative work you are doing and dishing it out to your audience. Mm -hmm. How should the audience look at it? How should your potential customers look at it? And also in terms of how should the corporates look at it? The marketers look at it. The marketing agencies, there are so many agencies also who, you know, who act as marketplaces into that, into all this stuff. So how should these people look at it going forward? Is yeah. it going towards strengthening of everything? Or is it going towards uh, a difficult moment and then there will be a lot of churning? Because everywhere, even in social media, there is churning. Social media platforms, there is churning. Usage of people, the responsibilities as an individual creator is also increasing. Podcasting, the number of podcasts, uh, uh, people are growing, but the number of podcasts is facing that pot fit. So everywhere, the people who are supposed to influence, also you have to make sure, uh, people have to make sure that they are being true to their listeners, their potential customers, everywhere. I want to understand several things here at the same time. I thought, why to ask different things at different moments? They're so interrelated. Why not ask you at this uh, together so that you can answer them at your own pace? Because a lot of people are putting their own whole apparatus, their whole uh, business or their existence almost on whatever related to affiliate marketing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I would say, I, I, I believe there's an opportunity in the market right now because there's there's a gap that's happening between the like brands or merchants, the, the companies that have these affiliate programs and the content creators and the affiliates. So for example, on the brand side, they want to work on a performance basis. They only want to pay you once you generate a customer for them. Um, and that's the model that they prefer to work off of. However, what we're seeing now, especially with like content creators, influencers, even like content sites, so people that have like a blog or a review site, whereas five years ago, they would have all been happy to work on a performance basis. So if let's say a brand gives them five, 10, 15% rev share, they would have been really happy. But that's really no longer the case. A lot of these content creators now are asking for upfront fees. They want to get paid first. Um, right. and, and, and I, you know, the argument for that is a lot of times, you know, a content creator will make content, they'll write a review or a video and they'll put it out there. They do all of this work and then it doesn't really work out for them. Um, and it's not necessarily to do with their fault, but maybe the, the brand's product or funnel or isn't really like dialed in yet. And so the content creators, they want upfront fees. You know, they won't, they don't want to necessarily work on that straight performance basis. They want to get some kind of upfront fee and then work on a performance. And so there is a gap right now where if you're an affiliate or a content creator or a publisher and you want to get in with these big brands and develop relationships with them, work with them on a performance basis. They'll be happy if you come to them and you're like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I have this audience. I feel like your product, your brand would really resonate with them. I would love to partner with you and promote your products on a performance basis. I guarantee you that they're going to be very happy to work with you uh, because there's so many people now, even like micro influencers that have under a thousand followers, you know, sometimes they're charging upfront fees too. Um, and so if you can separate yourself from that, go in there, prove that you can generate sales and customers for them. Then maybe later down the road, you can start negotiating upfront fees. But I, I think 
the, the key thing to remember about affiliate marketing is it's performance basis. Everyone's got to make money. If everyone's not making money, then it just doesn't work. And so if you're an affiliate that just isn't generating sales, then you have a problem there. Um, and you need to look at whether it's a, it's an issue with how you're building the content, or is it an issue with the type of partners you're partnering with? Um, but to be quite honest, if, if you want to, there are many ways that you can, you know, get into affiliate marketing. And, and like you said, there's so many brands, every single brand right now has an affiliate program. I think step one is to define the niche or market or vertical that you want to specialize in and then do some research and find out who are the biggest brands in that niche. So you can do it the old school way by just searching on Google. You can use ChatGPT to find a list of brands, or you can sign up to some of the big affiliate networks um, like your share of sales, commission junctions, and then just look at who and what are the top performing programs on there. But that's kind of like what I would recommend is become an expert in your niche and then build an audience around that niche and then look for brands who actually match that niche that you're talking about and then work towards partnering with them in the beginning on a performance basis and build that relationship. Right, right, Frederick. Let's let's understand the risks here for different, you know, components of this whole uh, market. One is the influencer themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, many times they don't know the brands. They don't know. Uh, uh, maybe, for example, if you take Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon is a well-known marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, why? It has opened its, uh, you know, influencer program, affiliate program for so many people. It's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But people generally go and buy on Amazon because of what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, influencers or every second influencer has an Amazon link. Mm -hmm. Does it does it dilute the perception of a brand like Amazon or anyone else that? Listen, these guys are not able to sell their products that they need so many affiliates because for an individual, I will keep on getting so many, uh, say, uh, say uh, advertisements or, or promotions or everything coming to it. Because if you click one of these things, several others will come in. So mm -hmm. I will not get a very great uh, sort of a perception in that sense because as a customer, I know that these things are happening. They are not doing it because they like the product. They may ne never have tried the product, they are just doing it for some. Is there a risk for the brands or companies here? Second is, is there a risk for the influencers themselves? Because they are just uh, trying to, nothing harm because you need to make money also. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a fact of life. But yeah. is it the right way? What is the right way? How do you create that right risk? Is it sometimes, you know, create uh, creativity and uh, Content creation is a very tough task. You need to yeah. earn some money to pay your bills. So there is a bit of a, can be some bit of a desperation also. Mm -hmm. You want to sell as much as possible, but the risk is also there that your audience might understand it, that uh, that there is, a, uh, there is a mismatch. And this yeah. person is going to oversell or taking us for granted. Because if there is a problem with a brand, with the product that you have recommended, and they write on your social media that listen this was not good then it can impact your image not so not so well especially in today's time how do you see that and especially companies also uh, you talk about uh, you know the uh, dtc brands for mm -hmm. them how does it work uh, this way does it is it worth the risk or there has to be a much more refined manner where all components of this game are benefiting but in the right manner and the last is cost customer. How should they make the best use of this? But not at the same time, you know, there is a too much of uh, too much of fatigue around it. And mm -hmm. secondly, they get duped by or almost duped, if I can use that word, by mm -hmm. selling by people who they trust in one way, but they don't know them personally. But mm -hmm. they just listen to their content. Just because somebody listens to me does not mean that uh, that does not mean that they will listen to me. Uh, mm -hmm. But they can certainly try some things, but later on, they can put the blame on me. Listen, I tried it because of you. I bought it because of you. And now this product did not turn out to be good. Yeah. 
So I would say, okay, so I'll start off from, from the affiliate perspective. I think there's no right or wrong way of doing it. There's actually a spectrum, right? So on one end here, you can, you have like affiliates that just don't care, right? So you have some certain review sites where they're just pumping out content reviews all day long. They can pump out, pump, pump out like thousands of reviews a month and, and they don't really care about looking authentic and about how many links that they have they're a review site and their goal is monetization and making as much money as possible and they know that there's going to be a percentage of customers that come and they see it and they're like eh, i don't know like this site has a ton of affiliate links they're just trying to make a dollar off of me but there's actually a lot of people that are going to be like oh okay you know what this like looks like a pretty good review i'm interested and then they're able to, to monetize it so if you go on the extreme end where you're like just pumping out a lot of content, a lot of links, just promoting a lot of brands that could work, you know, that's fine. Right. And then you have the other opposite end where you have certain people that have maybe like a blog or they're a content creator and they're like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be someone that's just constantly pushing out affiliate links and promoting products to people that I don't believe in. And they're very selective with who they work with and who they partner with. And, and they're not, they're going to say no to a lot of brands more than yes, uh, because they care more about their audience and that's okay too. Right? Like it, it, I think it depends on what your goals are. And I think that even with that strategy, you can make a lot of money because when customers actually see you promoting a product, they know like, oh, wow, like this person doesn't really promote a lot of brands. So when they do it, it's it they actually do use it they're actually a customer themselves and they believe in it so i can trust it a little more so that's that's the affiliate side i think it ranges um i think on the brand side the challenge that you have it's it's well one brands always need to be concerned with how their brand is being promoted online right so they want to partner with with good affiliates good partners um I think the methods and the way that their brand is being promoted math matters. But the number one thing is, are they performing? Are they generating customers? And what is the quality of those customers, right? Because it's, it's one thing to be an affiliate and promote a lot of volume, right? But if you're sending a lot of customers that are low quality, so maybe they're purchasing the lowest price product on your site, or maybe they're doing a lot of refunds. That's something that a brand's not going to be interested in. You know, the brand on the brand side, they're interested in, you know, the, the amount of revenue that you can drive for them, the quality of the customers. And then finally, you know, are you a good partner and representative of, of their brand, right? Like you need to be, they don't want to work with people who are saying false things just to get a, a quick dollar. Um, so that's, that's the brand and on the brand side, I would say the hardest part about owning like an e-commerce brand and having an affiliate program is finding really good affiliates because that's what it comes down to. Um, I would say the majority of every single affiliate program that I've worked on in my 15 year career, it came down to just like a handful of affiliates that were driving 90% and more of the revenue. So for brands, it's very hard to find good partners. It's not easy. There's, there's a lot of like, you know, you can start an affiliate program and you'll get a bunch of signups and a bunch of people that come, but that doesn't mean that there's a lot of revenue that comes from that. The brands need to have a strategy. They need to have someone in place that's managing the program and trying to recruit good partners that are going to drive revenue. So that's the most important thing for the brand side and the customer side. I mean, customers, I would say customers have become very smart in terms of recognizing, you know, reading a review article and knowing like, okay, there's a million affiliate links in here. Like, who is this website? Is it a trusted site? But they've also become really smart in terms of knowing that even some of the bigger, uh, like publishers, the bigger websites out there are also promoting affiliate links. Um, so it comes down to the, the content that you're, that you're actually writing about. Is the review actually thorough? Is it good? Does it seem honest? Um, and you know, it, it, even like, honestly, the, the truth is I've seen websites where it's just like, it's a, the, it's a review site. They're just trying to get your money. They make a ton of money either way. You know, there, there's a lot of people that 
will sign up. So I think as a customer, it's important to do your research and look to see like, is this a trustworthy source that's promoting this product? Right, right, Frederick. Let's talk of DTC brands. You talk yeah. about it. In terms of affiliate marketing, yeah. uh, there are so many brands in this segment. In terms of affiliate marketing, an affiliate, mar affiliate marketer or an influencer will always go towards a brand which is giving them the highest revenue per se. And normally that's the tendency. This is the high, high value product mm -hmm. and this is the high percentage. So mm -hmm. if I have to put a link, why not go for uh, this particular brand? Mm -hmm. Does this mean that smaller uh, companies or new companies who are directly trying to reach customers, they are losing out in this whole thing? And that internet is full of, you know, only influencers with who are promoting high value products or higher percentage uh, giving, you know, uh, uh, higher, higher percentage dollars uh, in, in terms of your, their revenues. How do they then, then the smaller brands fight out into this market or will it have to be a, a much more different strategy for affiliate marketing for them? Yeah, so that's a good question. So really as a brand, you have two ways of making affiliate program work. On one side, you have the commission or the payout, right? If you were to offer a million dollars per customer, you would have a ton of affiliates. You wouldn't have problems recruiting affiliates, but you're limited in terms of how much you can offer based on your business economics. So there is a ceiling to how much you can offer on the payout, but the payout is number one. It definitely makes a big difference. The other lever that you have to play with is the performance of the, of the funnel, the conversion rate, right? And this is where brands have the most power to compete um, because you can offer a million dollar payout, but if people don't buy the product and the conversion rate is zero, that affiliate would make no money. The brand makes no money. It just doesn't work. It, you can have a lower payout, but have a really good conversion rate, five, six, seven, eight percent conversion rate, which, which some brands are able to get by building out funnels like direct response, high converting funnels, high performing creatives, having like a good strategy in place. And the, the affiliate will make a lot of money, right? And so that's what we do as a consulting agency is we work with direct-to-consumer e-commerce brands and we do two things. One, we give them the strategy in terms of how to build an affiliate program that'll recruit and, and attract big, high-quality affiliates. And then two is we make the introductions to the, to the big affiliates that we work with when they're ready. So, you know, we work with a lot of seven, eight figure, nine figure brands. Um, but I've worked with six figure brands in the past that can build a really successful affiliate program. Now that's not the type of client we work with anymore, but you can definitely compete with the, with the big brands out there. It comes down to like your conversion rate is, is how you can really compete. And, and also like the, the strategy in place in terms of how you manage the affiliates and what you provide them that will allow them to be successful and profitable. Right, right, Frederick. Tell us a bit more about your company performance partner so that, you know, people who want to uh, interact with you and, 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 and try to do business with you, they can also understand, okay, this is the place where I can, you know, uh, deal with. Yeah. So, so the big thing with us is we help D 2 C brands in the eight to nine figure range uh, grow without having to invest in any capital. So typically, if you want to grow your revenue, you have to work with an agency and pay a monthly retainer or you have to hire someone. You're also going to have to pay for invest capital and paying for the ads as well. We work with a special type of affiliate called media buyers. So these are affiliates where they promote their links on They'll run Facebook ad campaigns, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, Google search, and they use their own money to run ads, paid ads on these platforms. And these are some of the best, not only media buyers, but marketers, growth experts in the world. Um, and we provide them with the strategy on how to build an affiliate program to attract them. So again, we give you the strategy on how to build and manage the program yourself. And then once that's in place, then we make the introductions to the big affiliates. And we do that 
on a one-time fee. And then we, it, it, the value is you're not having to pay for any ads. It's all on a performance basis. And we teach you how to manage the affiliate program yourself. So you don't have to pay these high retainer fees. You can manage it internally. Right. Right, Frederick. Yeah. Now, my last question to you is to understand, Frederick, who does this uh, future of affiliate marketing you know, belong to? Is it the influencers? Is it the platforms? Is it the companies? Is it the brands? Who does it? Because everyone is in a flux. Uh, you see, even social media platforms where most of this, uh, you know, uh, people who have built their influence, they are shifting. And mm. you never know who, who will close at one what point in time. Or you get kicked out of one particular platform. That's where now people are saying, try to own your audience. Mm -hmm. And then people are moving towards newsletters and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to understand from that perspective, even for businesses, they, they have to understand, they also know about this reality that mm -hmm. tomorrow will be a different world altogether with no influencers or on one particular platform. And, and so, they, so how do you make sure that the future stays with you? How does it work out in the future from each perspective as an influencer also that I am not too invested in one platform or otherwise one platform is gone and, and it, uh, I do not have anything with me or from a business perspective because if I tie up with certain influencers and they get a bad name, I also get a bad name mm -hmm. or they I, be, I invest my time and energy with them. Suddenly that platform closes down. Mm -hmm. How does it work? Where do you know more about the pitfalls there? So that's why I ask, who does the future of affiliate marketing belong? And how do I ensure that the future belongs to me? Yeah, so I think, it, you know, affiliate marketing, again, is, is performance basis. You know, it's not about one person. If only one person is making money or one person is successful or one person is profitable and the other is not, it doesn't work. So it only works when all parties are profitable. That's how a program actually scales. So on the, the affiliate side, it's about growing your audience and, and, and being authentic and being an expert and having them like and trust you. I think even whether you're into affiliate marketing, you're an influencer in business, that's what it's all about. I mean, that's what you and I are doing right now, right? So right. growing an audience, being authentic, having them like you, having them trust you is huge. So I think on that side, that's what it's all about. And on the brand side, it's you know you gotta you gotta put effort into your affiliate program you have to have a strategy you can't just launch a program and be like okay well we're offering a five percent rev share and that's it you, you know you have to make your affiliates happy you have to do things so that they are making money as well they're profitable because if you can do that then you know the sky is the limit and then there you're gonna have a lot of people coming to you and you're gonna be able to generate a lot of money so that those are the two keys from the affiliate and brand side Absolutely. Absolutely, Frederick. So there is much to learn about this. And I'm sure uh, this all this learning cannot happen from you in this one episode. For more, they will have to come to you. So people who want to learn more from you, about you, about your company, uh, uh, what is the best way for them to connect with you? Honestly, the best way is LinkedIn. So I'm very active in LinkedIn. I'm on there. I'm engaging. Um, I post every single day or at least five days a week. Um, so my name is Frederick Jean Bart on LinkedIn, CEO of Performance Partners. Definitely just add me there, hit me up, ask me any questions. I'm someone I, I, I honestly believe and I, I love helping people out. So if there is a question that you have about affiliate marketing, just add me, ask me the question, and I'm always here to help. Wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.